Wool Long Fallen Dynasty is filled to the brim with boss battles, but if you've just booted the game up, you might be struggling with the first boss as you discover the pace and mechanics of the game. In this video today, I'm going to help you out in defeating the first boss by going over equipment, spells, how to boost your morale for the battle, and then breaking down the fight across both stages. A lot of the difficulty of the first boss really does come down to just simply understanding the game's deflect mechanic as well as timing, so spend a lot of time grinding the previous monsters just to establish a good cadence for yourself. If you can quickly jump ahead to any of the uh, video that interests you the most using the chapters in both the timeline and the description. And if you end up enjoying the video, please don't forget to like, comment, and or subscribe. Each one of those helps out any content creator you watch in an absolute huge way. Lastly, don't forget to follow me on Twitch where I stream this game as well as a slew of others every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. But let's dive in on how to beat the first boss in Wool Long Fallen Dynasty. So to start us off, we're going to go through three things really quick. Our virtues, our spells, and then our equipment. So the first thing I want to talk about is our virtues. And this is the very beginning of the game, so don't worry about a build or anything to beat the boss. Um, the, I'm just bringing up the virtue section because I'm going to be talking about some spells that rely on level 2 of both earth and wood. And I think despite whatever build you're going to be going with in the game you're going to have a good amount of wood or earth because earth is going to help you out a lot with your equipment rate as well as wood helping out with your hp so those two i think you are going to find a pretty moderate amount of uh, uh, points investment in any build you're going into so i would say put one point into each so that the level is two and the reason behind that is we're going to go into spells here and look at wizardry spells the first one here for Wood, Unstoppable Force, only requires you to be level 2 and have 7 morale, which is nice, and we're going to cover morale a little bit more in the morale section. This is increases the automatic recovery during low spirit and decreases automatic depletion during high spirit, so that when you are nearly drained of your spirit, you're about to be um, staggered, this is going to help that spirit come back to a baseline faster. And if you're at a super high amount of spirit, it helps so that the depletion rate is much slower. That's a very good ability. I think there's a bit of a trap here in the Absorb Vitality, uh, which I used quite a bit, but it doesn't really do a ton of health return to you unless you do it for a big critical strike, which is very, very, very doable on the boss. In fact, that's how you kind of beat them. But still, I think that uh, the amount of vitality that it gives you is not worth the spirit investment and the time it takes to cast the spell. The other one I want to talk about is the Earth Phase. Enhanced defense. For a certain period of time, you receive less damage from enemies and will not flinch except from some powerful attacks. The nice thing about this ability is it is cast very quickly and it's going to help you mitigate a lot of the damage that is coming your way from the boss and you're not going to get displaced as quickly. He's not going to smash you apart and throw you in places unless he's doing a particularly heavy critical slam in one, if not both, of his phases. So those are the two spells I really wanted to highlight really quick. And then when we talk about equipment, um, I'm going to show you my equipment, but for for the sake of this video, I'm going to just bring it down to like, okay, we'll, we'll take off the helmet here. The chest piece, we're going to put on just a yellow turban soldier armor, <clears throat> which you'll probably be using unless you have the, uh, the pre-order armor. And we'll even use, uh, let's just use yellow turban champion bracers. There we go. And we'll use another yellow turban armor. So you don't need super cool gear here. And even for your weapons, you're probably only going to have access to one of these two, right? Um, do whatever one works best for your play style. Don't feel like you're locked into it. Okay, the only way I'm going to beat this boss is if I use the polearm. I'm using the polearm because I've invested a lot into Earth, and it fits the play style I like, but don't feel like you cannot use the saber and be effective. I just wanted to quickly cover that because I don't think, I, I don't want people to think that that is what was gating them from beating the fight. So let's move now into morale, which is probably the thing that is truly gating you from winning the fight of the first boss. Without going into the minute details of morale, I'll just quickly say that it is something that is going to superficially boost your combat ability when you're in combat outside of your level. So our morale right now is 10 because we've gotten to the last flag. That's important because that enables us to have a baseline of only 10 every time we die. This is integral for a lot of our skills and it's integral for fighting this boss. So once you get to this flag, it's time to really kind of boost your morale. And the best way to do that is by simply just going back through things. Now you can go back and just kill these guys a bunch of times over and over and over, and that's fine. But really what you wanna do, and this is gonna help you twofold, 
is go and kill the tiger boss if you have not or the tiger kind of mini boss and we'll go over to him really quick if you have not seen him but this is going to enable you to get some timing down and it's going to really boost your morale up very quickly and the nice thing about that is of course you're going to benefit from getting to around 20 morale and every time you kill that tiger boss it should get you about one morale's worth of uh um a one level of morale. Oh, and also you can take a crit shot and actually absolutely tank your morale generation like you're trying to show off in a video. So you can do that too, but I would not recommend it. But either way, just get yourself to the tiger boss, which I'll show you real quick if you have not seen. We're going to fast forward from this point. You can kind of see where it is. Okay, so we're back at the flag that was the second flag in the mission. We're going to rest here again, and you're going to take a look at our baseline um, morale. It's still at 10, meaning that we're not going to ever drop below that, which is, again, really good. So the real big thing here is, after you've rested at that flag, come back, make sure to get a sneak attack here, because it's going to give you just about a level of morale. And then you're going to want to go over here, destroy these boxes, and kill this tiger boss. So I'm not gonna sit through me doing this a bunch of times. I'm gonna just skip ahead to me having killed this tiger boss enough times to get my morale to 20. And just a real quick note on this tiger boss, I switched back into my OP gear for this so I can do it quickly, but you wanna just quickly sneak up on this guy to mitigate a lot of the damage you have to deal with and get a sneak attack in. That's gonna get you a ton of morale and it's gonna make this fight a lot faster for you. All right, we've gotten up to 20 morale. It is time to do the fight. I got lucky and found a cool new chest piece while killing the tiger boss, so I upgraded to it. I'm actually at 22 morale. You'll probably get two more morale just by coming back to that front flag. So let's now jump into the boss fight and break down both stages and how those stages kind of unravel themselves. So jumping into the fight here with uh, Zhongliang, we have a character that is going to be pretty aggressive with a big, huge, heavy mace. Now, if you're jumping ahead to this point from the beginning of the video, just a quick reminder, make sure that your morale is around level 20 to make this a much easier fight for you. So when you jump into this first phase, you want to try to not lose any of your dragon potions. If you lose the ability to heal, the second phase is a little bit harder for you because he will get a full health bar back. So jumping into the actual fight, it's pretty easy to deflect. You can kind of see where things are coming and you just want to make sure you're keeping a good deflection up and maintaining your um, defensive spell if you chose to get it. Now, a big thing you want to really take advantage of in both of these phases is using your spirit attack. Every time you use your spirit attack, if you see his gauge at the top, if that spirit attack makes contact or if you deflect a critical strike or anything of that sort, you're actually going to make it so that it's easier to stagger him. You'll see that that bar at the top, the white portions of it get colored in more and more and more as you actually deflect, as you um, uh, deflect his critical strikes and hit him with your spirit attack, which I'm using a controller, so that's triangle for me. And then hitting him with critical strikes can really both pu push up your uh, morale and significantly take chunks of his health out. So that's your big first portion is make sure you're doing these, just getting this timing down so that the second portion is much easier for you. Stage two of this fight is similar in that you're going to be very defensive and deflect a lot, but you're going to have a far more um, offensive and very in-your-face character. So the big thing here is watching out for those rock attacks that he just did. You can just block through them, but you're only going to mitigate a lot of damage. You really want to either deflect left or right or dodge left or right. You want to get out of the path of destruction because it will still do damage to you. A lot of his primary attacks are going to be sweeps with his big hammer, and those things are pretty easy to kind of choreograph. He sometimes will do uh, two attacks followed by a big third sweeping one. The big thing is getting deflections on that critical you just saw where he launches his arm at you. Doing it two or three times will actually break the arm. And when he's in a staggered state afterward, you can swing on that arm enough times that it will shatter like glass. You'll actually hear a glass shatter noise. That means that that arm is out of commission until he does that critical strike again, because he can regrow the arm through the critical strike. He has two critical strikes you're going to be seeing in this fight. One is that one where he launches the arm at you, and the other one is a, a rapid succession of swings. Keep in mind, like right here, you can see he'll jump into it, but we deflected it. But keep in mind that he will chain those criticals together. So just because you dodge and deflected a critical doesn't mean you take your guard down. 
You have to really be mindful of the fact that he's going to take one critical and just chain it right into the other one if both of his arms are active. If they're both not active, the chances of him doing that are much slim. And he seems to only regrow that arm after around 50%. That's when he seems likely to do it. But I don't know if there's a set cooldown in which he won't regrow his arm. But you can see that he regrew it now. And he's changing his criticals where he'll do the critical while he launches his arm. And then he'll jump into the rapid successive swings. You see it coming up right here. So he'll jump into this. I got him mixed up. And then he'll immediately go into the arm grab one. Which I took both on the face like a champion. But still, those are the two big criticals you want to watch for. You want to watch for those rock shots that you make sure you dive to the side. He's going to do the charging a lot of shoots. Pretty easy to choreograph this one. And he'll have the big three swings where he'll go one, two in quick rapid succession by a third more slower, or more slower, a third slower swing that you want to make sure that you deflect. Once you kind of get that cadence down, it's a little bit easier to deal with. This jump attack is not so common. I, I think I've only seen it a handful of times when I fight him so just kind of know that that's coming when you see him in the air and there's that stall out point that's when you're going to start getting ready to get that deflect up because then you'll actually do the deflect you might do it a little early otherwise but just kind of getting the cadence down here doing this fight um, if you die it's not a big deal you can either push your uh, morale back up to 20 or you just jump back into the fray because your morale is going to go back up. So hopefully that helps you out in getting a better head on how to defeat this boss. I know a lot of people were struggling with it. And I kind of brought you through this on a rapid fire basis. But it really is just getting down that attack pattern and understanding how your deflects work in this game. And understanding that cadence because like I've said... Every single Soulsborne has its own style of cadence of attacks and deflecting and parrying and, and crit strikes and all that action here. So really kind of dealing with those is really going to be the key here. And making sure that you deflect those crit strikes and use your spirit attacks to reduce his spirit bar so you can stagger him more for a crit strike as well to do a substantial amount of damage. If you have any other questions or you're struggling with this one, go ahead and let me know in the comment section below. I will step you through as best that I can. And if you're enjoying this type of content, please do let me know in the comments below too. As always, guys, thank you so much for watching here today. Have a good one and take care.